Well, I'm on such a roll here. I'm doing do my third um, knife video here all in the same day. Some of you might think I've been like living in a in a cave or something, but I'm literally for the last well since I've had a computer, right? The last 20 years I have lived. Um, and long before that, but I have not had high-speed internet at all and now just recently got um, uh, Fiber internet even though I'm still outside of town um, I'm not in a you know, you know Inside the city. I, I got fiber internet. So <laughs> I go to upload a Eight or nine minute video it takes, you know a minute and a half it used to take I used to no kidding and We'll get to this knife here real quick, but when I would do a four or five minute video, I would literally, up until just, you know, six months ago, I would have to um, start uploading the video when I went to bed so that in the morning it would be uploaded to YouTube. Now it takes a minute and a half, so it's kind of weird for me to, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it yet. So. Which means I can just talk long and long and on and on and, and not say anything important and I can still upload it. I'm just kidding. I'll try to get something important. Um, here is, and I'm going to coin a word here um, that I haven't seen anybody use. A lot of guys are calling, you know, they'll take some Damascus, do a, uh, a three-part affair with a... A carbon core and they're calling it San Mai just because they think San Mai means three pieces well that's part of what San Mai means if you if you look it up you'll also see that San Mai means that the outer jacket is not hardenable like mild steel wrought iron um, low carbon stainless steel etc that's so that you have that, you know, the unbreakability, shock absorption properties of a non-hardenable jacket, which means this is not San Mai. And, and the um, three-piece laminated Damascus blades are not San Mai. So, I have decided to call these Laminascus, laminated Damascus. You heard it here first, Laminascus. Um, some people are calling them Sandmascus, which is fine, and we can all do what we want, right? But from Anderson Forge, this is called Laminascus. This is some um, laddered W's. I wonder how close I can get in here and um, remain focused on this on this blade, so you can see. That this is laddered W's jacket over a uh, oh what was this core 1095 I think it's 1095 which I then did my uh, Anderson Forge high contrast long sentence Anderson Forge high contrast um, Damascus proprietary um, oxide conversion process on making my black this is not coffee or or parkerized or hot blued or anything like that it's um it's a permanent black if you want my black off you're gonna have to grind it off so all that said also has this now this is a hot blue i think this is a hot blued guard this is a hot blued guard every now and then i will do um uh, my battery's about to go out Darn it. This might end up being a two-part video. I'm going to have to go. We're going to leave this all here, and then I'm going to go um, charge this battery, and I'll be back. Well, let's see. We're back. Got my battery charged, and anyway, that was... Uh, that was last night. This is a new day. Um, I forget where I was, but I think I was just about to, uh, I had discussed how this is uh, not San Mai, it is Laminascus, um, what I call Laminascus. 
and got my Anderson Forge high contrast proprietary oxide conversion permanent black contrast anyway a lot of, a lot of blah 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 so hot blue guard frosted I uh, it's mild steel and what I did was I take I got some really fine coal slag and I um, what I it's just a real fine abrasion I just call it it's like frosted it's not deeply blasted like you would do for parkerizing or anything um, and I like it and some cool desert ironwood if you look if every piece of this what I call utility grade desert ironwood is so uniquely different from everything else it's kind of crazy um, and you never quite know what you're going to get until you get in there. Like Forrest Gump and his box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. So, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Um, I got this. It's something I've really been appreciating a lot is um, what um, sheath maker Scott Teschner, leather worker extraordinaire, does is... Um, this is lined, but it's not it's not done with the fold over stuff. I hate that. This is this is a sandwiched um eight nine ounce leather that I have sandwiched a two three ounce on the inside. So it's nice and smooth leather inside the belt loop and inside the sheath. It it's just I really like the way it feels when it slides in and it's and it's full grain leather, right? So it's um it's uh, veg tan, tough. So anyway, nice sheath, nice sheath. And I, you know, a lot of leather workers out there that uh, are just building sheaths that look like they're three quarters of an inch thick. And I can, I just abhor them. I, I hate them. Um, there's no reason to do that. Um, even some real popular sheath makers. So I learned from Scott how to thin things down and and I think they should be and still be full tough tough leather so there's that I'll do a quick takedown for you guys um, god I really love this Laminascus you heard it here first so anyway quick takedown this is an easy one I did not do a fancy finial cover it's it's my uh, utility finial that I make on a lathe um, in every video I've been making for years I I explain how I now on the hunters is there's nothing up on top so I sometimes turn these over and use my thumb and push that handle off I want to leave the guard on the on the handle once again, I like my uh, I like my finials to look like I like it's a screw I bought the hardware store. Um, now these, oop, that pin came right out. Six sixteenth inch stainless pins, and even though we've got pretty darn decent um, fit here on my components it's basically a seamless fit kind of hard to get that thing does not want to focus right there anyway I put uh, what I'm saying here's the knife and that frosted guard I really like the way they look I really like the way the the frosting looks so anyway I like the put one pin in the guard on one side there you can see from the uh, from this end what's going on and I leave one pin in the other side of the handle that way that I'm not trying to get two pins into two holes because this one's sticking out further so it gets started in one hole and then that kind of helps things get going in the other hole and here's my 
I call this a, it's a receiver. There's a ledge. This is steel on steel down in there. 1032. So this little shoulder here on the uh, on the finial catches that ledge down in there. Pulls things up snug. And I've been saying for years, this is not this is not a uh, lug nut on an F-250. It's just a 1032 finial on a 1032 tang. And one, once you bottom, get everything bottomed out and sucked up tight, there's no reason to go beyond snug. It's, it's not going to loosen up. So anyway, there she is. What do we get? Can we get in here a little bit? Kind of hard to... See how dialed in we are? Laminascus, Anderson Forge Hunter. Um, hope you all are okay. Enjoy the fall.